In this video, we're going to learn how to use the resource browser in uh, Qt Designer so that we can use images in our project. I'm going to start by creating a new file here, new file. And this time we're going to choose widget instead of main window so we can see the differences. And I'm going to press create. I'm going to save this file, control S, and I'm going to save it. I already saved it before as image GUI inside our QRC folder, QRC files folder. And in this folder, I already have um, a little file here that is ready for us to check out. Uh, we'll be there in a second. What I want to do is create a folder here where we're going to place our images. So, place a folder there called images. And inside the images, we could have uh, another folder, let's say, icons. So, back to Qt Designer. If I go into resource browser here, let's look at it. And I'm just gonna go to icons8.com just to get some free items here and I'll, I'll download one of these guys. And one thing to keep in mind, you don't have something like Tint where you can like download some, some items like this and then change the color with Tint. We don't have that in Qt Designer. There are other ways, of course, uh, in the Qt framework uh, to, to do that. So I've done, downloaded some icons here, and I have two PNGs, one GIF and one SVG icon, so we can see what happens with, with different formats. And also two d different images here, one PNG with uh, transparency, which I, in Photoshop, uh, cut out uh, this yellow part that you see here, that should be transparent. And, uh, and another one, which is a JPEG file. And let's see how we can use this. So resource browser, I'll press the, the, the little pencil icon there. And in here, we're going to create a new resource file by clicking this button. And it's going to ask us where do we want to create that resource file. <coughs> and I'll, I'll just leave it here in the root. Obviously, you can put it in a folder or something. And these will, I'll, I'll call it just so that we know what is what. So I'll save that. Okay, now we have a file and we can have multiple of these ones here in that in this list on the left. Now on the right, we want to add a prefix. Basically, uh, a prefix is, is like a folder structure here. So let's say icons for this one and another one images. And if I select icons, and I can press here to add files to this prefix or folder or whatever you want to call it. And I, our icons are in here. So I'm going to select them and say open. Move that. Okay. And images, it's going to be these two. Open. So you can see the folder structure that we had before. Icons, images. We're going to start with style sheets and see how we can use them using style sheets. So I only have a form there, which is a Q widget. And now I can come here and add resource. And I'm going to select, let's start with these um, JPEG. And as you can see, we got a URL, URL, and this is pointing to the QRC file. It's using the QRC file structure. So if I say OK, there's our background image. So we can use CSS here. So if I come here and I say, for example, background position center, now our image is in the center. I say, for example, center bottom. It's going to center on the horizontal and uh, go to bottom on the vertical, as you can see here. Just to quickly show you that we can also use transparency. I'm going to select uh, my other image, which is a PNG with transparency, the circuit board. Say OK. And I'm going to give it a, a background color. You can see that we got the background green in these cuts here. And I'll just, to illustrate that, I'll use a gradient. And now we have a gradient there on the cuts that I've did that I've made on the on the PNG. If you need more information about CSS and the properties that you can set, you can check out this website or any other website uh, where you can learn CSS. Now, because I apply the style sheet to the form, the background is always going to be that image. And anything that I place inside, like a label, you can see that the label also has that image as a background. So to filter that out, I could potentially put a frame here and then say background none on the frame, 
or transparent and that's what I'll do actually in this case I'm gonna do a widget okay and you can see the widget has the same background image right there exactly the same thing so to expand this widget if I uh, right click outside of it so that I can select the form and I'll select uh, a layout so just to see that uh, just to see where the widget is I'll just give it a, a background color right now of um, okay that's our widget okay now we have these borders around here how do we get rid of those borders well those borders come from the layout that we have applied here to the form so if I come down here here it is it, there's the layout for the form so if I start removing these margins so now I'll go back here and I'll say that the background is none the text label we can add images uh, to text labels or buttons uh, using the properties panel here the properties editor and I'll look for a Q label and as you can see here we go pixmap so pixmap is re always refers to images in, in Qt so I'll click here and I'll select choose resource and now I can choose an icon for example and then we have SVG right there so if I start writing text here you can see the text is showing up over there but now my image is gone and even if I get rid of the text, the, the image doesn't come back and I, I would have to come here and select another another image. Okay, so I just selected this uh, JPEG image. And if I scale it here, you can see there's our image. If I press scale to contents, then we can scale our image and distort it <laughs> if we like. Okay, so now let's try uh, other approach and I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna write some text in there and I'm gonna use CSS we can also uh, use the border image method and this way we have access to border radius for example now my image has a border I went ahead and changed a few more things and if we come down here to queue label we can align the text so I'll just align it to the right and bottom you can give it a margin so it's not all there if you want a button with uh, just an image like an icon button uh, your best bet is a tool button so you can have an image and you can have text at the same time in there of course this also works with push button but tool button is a bit more flexible so this is what the tool button looks like let's select the icon here for us so we're going to resources choose resource and this time we'll select this icon press OK now the the size of the icon you remember it was 32 and I'm gonna add one with uh, the SVG because I'm curious what's gonna happen if I add one with the SVG and I'll just uh, control C control V on this guy so that I don't have to add another one and I'll select our SVG image this time so I'll use a GIF for this one and this is a GIF so if we want to have the image and text let's see how we can go about that refresh and down here where it says Q tool button we are asked about the button style so we can choose tool button text beside and if we want to change the order we can do that up here if I'm not wrong right to left and now we have the icon on the right and the text on the left now for some reason padding doesn't work with tool button so I'll, uh, I'll do that <laughs> not the proper way to do it but there you go I'll just quickly style this a little bit more so I just added a little bit more styling here and now we have a tool button that looks like that changing the size of this might will change the icon as you can see there just so that you're aware of that. Now you can see that when I hover these guys uh, my cursor doesn't change. Let's change that really quickly. I know this is mainly for images but you know. And we might as well add a, a tooltip and we'll add one to the refresh here. So and also I can control and click several buttons and now if I go to my cursor I can select a pointing hand. 
So that gets that sorted. And I have a tooltip here, which has the same style as the, what I'm hoovering. Now, I didn't set the layout, and I should have, but and because I didn't, this happens, okay? Okay, now we're in Sublime Text, so that we can run the code and see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to load the, the UI file from memory here. And you can see that now we have a new resource file uh, when, when we created one. And here it is in its uh, QRC file. And that is how it, look, it looks like. We need to compile that so we can use it. So the way we, it goes is we go to use this command. And I'll, I'll just do it here. So I don't have to worry about paths or anything like that. Open containing folder. Come in here and I'll say CMD enter. And if I'm not wrong, the um, the name of the pi file needs to be exactly the same name as the um, as the Q QRC file. Otherwise, it, because it's going to import resources from Qt, it's going to import this name. Okay, so it needs to to be the same name. Uh, at least with the the method that we're using for for pi side here for loading the UI like that. So now we have a new file there. And I can open it and show it to you. And it's this, a bunch of bytes for our images. And if I run it, there we go. There's our UI with uh, the refresh and the tool button with the SVG. And this is a GIF, but it, even though it's an animated GIF, it's not animating here. Now I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna I'm going to turn these into an executable and see if the images are still there. So I'll be right back. Now the previous video talks about this, but uh, I'll show it to you anyway. So this is the command that I'm using to pi for pi installer and we're going to see if the images are still there or not. Okay, so I paused the video because I had a bunch of errors because I was being silly. So I was using uh, the example that we had of um, let me just show you on a previous tutorial loading UI files and I was using uh, I was loading it from memory I was use, uh, using this load uh, from memory example so what I did uh, the difference that I that I did I first converted the file to uh, image GUI uh, and PI and then uh, this is what's and then I just uh, did the rest of the example all right and I'm using Q widget on the other example it was a Q main window the reason why I'm using Q widget is because we did a Q widget and not a main window. So this is actually not necessary here. And this way it runs. And the application that it created, if I go here into dist distribution and I run it, there we go. There's our image images. That's the SVG right there. And exactly the same thing. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, got something from it. And now I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to talk about grouping buttons, uh, like check buttons and stuff like that. So I'll see you there.